Okay, so we're a few days uh, after we did this painting and um, obviously I've seen the video's been up for a couple of days or so. Um, was it the midweek video and today's Friday? So I've had a couple of days and I've seen a lot of your comments, um, which again, you know, I always appreciate. Um, a bit windy today, so hopefully it's, uh, the microphone's okay. So the colour is not too bad. Um, it is a little bit flat, um, and I know some of you have said, or at least one of you have said that uh, I should have given it more coats and it should have more of a glossy finish. Um, so it's not glossy by any stretch of the imagination. That could be down to um, the clear coat I'm using. Maybe the clear coat's not good enough. Um, but I'm going to, rather than masking it all off and giving it another couple of coats with that same stuff, because that's the only one I've got, um, I thought I'd just try it and see how it comes out. Um, so I'm going to give it a go at um, flattening and polishing it. So I'm going to use a 2000 on it. Uh, I'm going to flat it off as much as I can. Uh, obviously wet, wet sanding, and then I'm going to get a heavy cut on it, followed by the medium cut, followed by the fine cut, see what happens. So bear with me and um, let's see what happens. Hopefully it will uh, all go according to plan. And when we've done that, we'll, um, we'll do this bonnet as well. We'll do this bit on the bonnet. I'm gonna try cutting that back and see how that goes. But uh, I'm gonna get all the bits and pieces together and then I'm gonna give it a go, see how it goes. So bear with me and we'll be back. Right, get some squirty water on it. It's got some grass on this as well. Where, um, the council came and cut the grass. So, let's keep this nice and wet. This is the this is the grit that I used on um, Luffy Harold when I did that. So, I'm hoping that it's uh, going to be just as good on this. Because that came out really nice. Although that wasn't paint that I'd put on, of course. So, as instructed on other videos, I'm keeping away from the edges as much as possible. Keeping the paper flat, not pressing hard. Keeping well away from the edges. So I'm not going to show you, show me doing all of this. There's no point, is there really? So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put it on time lapse. I'm just going to stop the recording now. I'll do this, and then we'll get the polish on, and we'll see how it comes out. So that's not come out bad actually. It's not too bad at all. It's quite shiny. Um, I wouldn't say it was quite as shiny as the as the rest of the um, bumper, but you know what? It's not bad. Once once the rest of the car's properly cleaned and what have you, <coughs> I don't even think you'll notice. The colour match is pretty good to be honest. It's not wonderful through the camera, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I don't think anyone would ever notice that I've painted that unless they look really really closely it's pretty good pretty good yeah I think my skills are still a bit lacking and I've taken some advice from you and what I am going to do I think is at the very least maybe get some better quality um, clear coat and I will lay down more clear coat next time um, but generally it's come out pretty well pretty well 
You see it's got a shine to it. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing someone somewhere around here. Keeps lighting bonfires. We've had it for the last, this is the third year in a row that just, we can't tell where it's coming from. And it's absolutely choking. They're doing it all the time. Nightmare. Um, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this, do this bit, I've done like all of it on there, and now I'm gonna do it down there with the three stages. There's actually a few specks of rain as well. But I wanna get this bonnet done as well, so hopefully this rain will go away. Um, I want to get the bumper finished and the bonnet done as well today because I want to get this up for sale this weekend so I need to get it done um, there's a couple of bits under the bonnet and I need to clean the engine as well um, so I need to get that done I'm not going to film it all uh, I'll film some of it but um, yeah, let's just get this done and then we'll come back and we'll show you the result So it's actually stopped raining at long last, um, which was actually quite useful because I, I did the, uh, the cutting and, I was going to say the cutting and polishing, I've done the cutting. You can see it's a bit matte, it's drying off now. Um, this is, that was the scary bit, doing the, um, the cutting, but now I've done, I've done it on the red car, I know it's going to come up nice and shiny, but look at it there. That's where the scratch is. So I've gone over the whole bonnet, but I've concentrated a bit more on that bit. Um, I don't know why there's that bit in the middle there that's... Um, might have to go over that little bit again. I don't know why. I must have, maybe I missed that bit. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna actually. It might just be where it's wet because there's other bits that are the same colour as that where it's still wet. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna do the medium cut and uh, then the fine cut on on the bonnet. Uh, I think that'll probably be enough because it's not new paint work, is it? It's um. It's just trying to get rid of those scratches that are uh, sort of down there. Uh, I've also gone over that bit just there again uh, and I'm going to attempt to just polish that. Uh, I know some of you did comment about why don't you paint that as well. I'm surprised you didn't paint that bit. I wanted to see how that's going to come out and although I'm pleased with the way that's come out I'm not sure that I want to do that bit as well. If I was doing the entire bumper with no trim on it or anything like that I'd be a lot happier and I will actually attempt to do that and when I do do that on another car, when I get a car that I, ha I can't get a bumper in colour, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy good quality 2k paint in a can obviously and good quality one or 2k whatever it is um, clear coat and I'm going to paint the entire bumper with no trim on I'll buy a brand new bumper and I'll do it from scratch and I will film that as well um, I, I, it might be an expensive mistake but uh, based on what I've done so far I think I can make a relatively good job of it um, we will see we will see um, better paint will give me a better result I think um, but as I say, you know, I'm relatively happy with what I've done, um, but I know I can do better than that. So let's get this polished up, it's virtually dry now actually, um, I'm going to get some medium cut on it, I'll stick you back on time lapse um, and we'll get it polished up and hopefully we can get rid of those scratches and we'll have a nice shiny bonnet at the end of it, so let's see. As you can probably see, it started raining again. Oh, Jesus Christ. I was getting there. So I've just done a medium cut so far. There's still a few little light swirls in it. So I was going to go over it with a super finish plus. But now once it stops raining again, assuming it will, I'm going to have to um, let it dry off again. Bloody nuisance. If ever there was a time you needed something indoors that you can do this obviously I've tried painting in the winter before when it's too cold for the paint and obviously that was a disaster but um, yeah luckily I'm not painting in the rain at least with polishing I can let it dry off and um, and carry on it's a bloody nuisance so it's getting there um, I think the scratches are I, was, I can't tell from here because it's wet anyway with beadings but, but um, it's looking pretty good actually as I say there are some a few swirls in it and I want to go over it with the blue one and then I'll go over it with a myrrh polish again um, 
but yeah it's not looking too bad that bit uh, just there as well I've quickly just gone over that while it was raining really just because I'd already put the polish on it and it's um it's improved it already um, so I'm, hopefully I'm just gonna be able to touch that in the rest of the scratches will disappear enough from view and I can just touch that little bit that's black in and no one will notice um, as I say, I would I would like to have done a complete respray on a bumper, and I, and I will do that. As I, as I said earlier, I will do that um, on the next car I get, which I can't get bumper in colour, depending on the colour. I think if it, I mean, if it was one of those beige ones, the colour that I bought for that was completely wrong, completely wrong. And I know the body shops. Oh, the sun's coming out again now, and I know the body shops have problems um, with those colours as well. But you know, if it's white, especially, but then. With the white ones, you know, I'm picking the bumpers up for about 45, 50 quid, and the body shop charged me 100 pounds to paint it, so 150 quid, and I got a brand spanking new, shiny, good condition bumper. Because if you buy a second-hand bumper, invariably there's always issues with them. You know, they never per it's very, very rarely that they're perfect. And if you do get a perfect one, you know, they're going to cost you more than 150 quid. And I know they're not um, genuine ones, but they're as good as the genuine ones. They've even got the rubber bit at the bottom. Which the other gen, which the other non-genuine ones I used to buy, didn't have. Which looked fine on the car, but it was painted, whereas it shouldn't be really. Um, right, it's not raining again. I'm going to need to try and dry that off again, um, so we can go get on with it. So let's do that, and then we'll um, give it another go. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother filming. You'll just see me going around a car with a polishing machine, aren't you? It must be extremely boring. Um, so we'll come back once we've finished doing it, and hopefully, if the rain stops we'll get it finished then we can touch up those little bits of paint um, and then we can give it a wash actually we'll give it a wash and then touch up the bits of paint because I want to get the photographs taken today um, I say there's a couple of bits to do under the bonnet as well as well as cleaning the engine so I'd like to get that done before I take the photographs I want to get it completely ready to go before I take the photographs yeah there there's, seems to be I've got a, I've got a nice little uh, avenue to sell the cars out there I know some people are struggling selling cars at the moment these cars as well um, and there's one person who I won't mention who's a who, who, who sends me messages and sends me pictures of the cars and what have you I won't mention you, you but you know who you are um, it's currently got a white sport for sale and he's got it for a, a price that's cheaper than I would sell it for I, I, I said to him I would easily get three three four three four fifty I would put that up for and easily get it I think it's a 63 plate or a 64 plate sport white sport really nice He's made a lovely job of it, um, and he's got it up for I think two nine nine five or two nine fifty, and he can't sell it. And I just don't. Under, he's he's up north somewhere. Whether that makes a difference, I, I guess cars maybe are a bit cheaper up there. But I don't understand why he can't sell it. I mean that would be easily easily a five grand car plus if it was there. I can't remember what the mileage is. I think it was fifty thousand or something like that. It wasn't certainly wasn't high mileage. But he just can't sell it. I'm, I'm hoping he has now, but I did see it somewhere on Facebook or somewhere the other day. So I'm assuming he hasn't still sold it. So, but yeah, it's, it's bizarre. Anyway, enough of this waffle. Let's um, try and get this dried and then we can get it done before yet another uh, little shower decides to uh, come and dump itself on us. There you go, so it's all done. Um, the only things I've got left to do are just touching those uh, little bits of paint, the one on the front of the bumper and the one on the bonnet there which I'm just going to touch up so most of those scratches down there have pretty much gone now it's just a matter of um, touching that up um, I didn't want to paint that bit as I'm not going to keep repeating myself saying I'd rather paint the whole bumper but um, yeah it's all right it's not too bad not too bad at all um, I'd certainly be happy with doing the sills um, to that level of uh, expertise my limited expertise I'm just recording not even sure the microphone's on let me check yeah it is that's good um, just bear with right um, yeah so uh, yeah what was I saying <clears throat> but um, yeah I'm, I'm I'm too critical of my own work but yeah, it's alright it's okay it's it's not fan it's not a fantastic professional finish but it it is acceptable um, and I don't think your eye would not be drawn to it if you didn't know it was there. Um, we've got splatter all over the gaff as well now, so um, I need to. Uh, I'm not going to polish the old car. There are a, there are a few scratches down the side, but I, I could go on forever, couldn't I? It's a grey car; they show up quite badly, um, and it's a t I've got to get that moth out of there. That's another job I've got to do. 
um, yeah it, it shows up on a grey car so if it was a white car they wouldn't show up at all because it's showing the white that's underneath which I'm assuming is the primer um, or grey light grey I expect I don't know what colour the primer is on these when they're out of the factory um, yeah I'm pretty pleased with it so what I'm going to do now uh, I'm going to do my usual engine clean with uh, hashtag elbow grease um, we'll get that done uh, we'll get those bits of paint no get it washed snow foamed uh, and then we will touch up those bits once we've done the wash and then we'll get the pictures taken and it can go up to sale so that's good I'm not sure I'm, if I'm going to have enough time today to do it um, but yeah if I don't do it today I should get the pictures done that done in the morning um, but yeah let's get it done That's it, all nice and clean. That rag has been used so many times. One day when we've got a new washing machine, I'll run those through um, and give them all a good clean. That's it, clean. So there's one more thing I need to do under here and that's glue that, because that's come off. Bear with me one second and uh, I'll show you what I mean. So this is quite common on these, um, not just on accident damaged ones, but the way that that is manufactured, it just comes off. So the best thing to do is just shove it in the right place if I can I'm gonna to have to take that off I think um, just get some tiger seal on there and then put a um, cable tie around it just to hold it until the tiger seal goes off and then it's uh, as good as new so I'll get some gloves on because that tiger seal is filthy stuff uh, and we'll get some of that on there I'm sure I've got some black um, and get that glued and then that will be it under the bonnet and we can uh, get the old snow foam on it and get it clean. Love a bit of snow foam. <clears throat> now, one or two of you berated me once before because I used a sponge. <laughs> and, I, and they said, get yourself a, a pad, a microfiber pad. I already had a microfiber pad, a Magu Magu oh, I still can't say it, Magu's one. So I'm going to use it this time. I had, did use it last time. I'm going to let it soak for a little bit longer actually before I do that. Um, but yeah, I don't normally use a sponge. I normally do use this, but I think when I did it with a sponge before I couldn't find it, I couldn't find this. You know what I'm like in my garage. I can never find anything. But I've got some good news actually. Look, the our bath seats have sold. They were picked up by a young lady this morning. Um, and she's putting them, uh, look, check this out now, I'd be interested to uh, hear if it worked, but she bought the Arbath seats and she came in a, cor in a Corsa this morning, uh, like a boy racer to Corsa, uh, and she said, uh, I said, oh, you're going to get them in there? She said, oh yeah, I think they'll fit all right, and they did, I, managed, I, loaded, I loaded them in for her, and um, I said to her, she said, oh, they're really, really good condition, and I said, yeah, they are, and I started to tell her that they came out of the fake Arbath. And she, said, and she said, oh, that, that's, what, that's where they're going. They're going in this and pointed to a Corsa. And I said, into a Corsa? Are they going to fit? And she said, yeah, they're exactly the same. I don't know whether that's true or not, but she seems to think that they're the same fitting. Um, if they're not, then she'd have to sell them, I suppose, wouldn't she? But she must have done her research, I imagine. But that's interesting. If they do fit, I'll be interested to see a picture of them. I might message her and say, when you put me in can you send me a picture so it'll be interesting to see because that would be quite interesting because if that's the case assuming that um courses have i can't remember what I think, was it a d i'm not even sure what registration it was but i think it was like a d Corsa, possibly or a Corsa d but it'd be interesting to see if they've got if those courses have got airbags in the seats which I'm assuming they have, or she's just going to leave them disconnected and although they're there, obviously not connecting up. Um, I don't know, are they going to work? But then also there's the electrical connections for the seat sensor and um, 
and a seatbelt sensor. Are they going to be the same on a Vauxhall? I wouldn't have thought so, but I don't know. You'd, think, you'd like to think she's done her research, unless she's got a way around it. I don't know. But yeah, it will be interesting to see, or maybe she hasn't thought that, thought that far ahead. But yeah, interesting. So yes, you're listening to me waffling now whilst I'm going over me snow foamed car. So what else have I got to tell you? Oh yeah, I sold the uh, the the fake car bumper as well. I ended up selling seventy nine pounds and thirty five pounds delivery, and it cost me thirty six pounds for delivery. And I had to actually cut the box to make it one point eight meters long. Costs. Uh, the box I had, which I had the bumper delivered, the rear bumper delivered um, for the white car around, around the corner, uh, I kept the box and it just sort of slipped in and then I had some plastic to go over it, so that worked really well. But it was over two metres tall. When I went to the Parcel Force website, it was too big, so I had to cut it down. Luckily, I managed to do it and it fitted. Right, so that's that done. I'll rinse that out in a minute. I'll get the jet wash on it now. Um, so yeah, so that bumper's gone as well. So I'm starting to get a little bit more room in the garage now, but now I'm getting itchy feet. I want to break another one. <laughs> no, not yet. I'm, I'm sort of erring at the moment on the, the white car that's around the corner is going to be a work in progress and will be the car that I do every now and again. Whereas <clears throat> I'm sort of going to aim towards more of the light damaged ones I think for the time being uh, and then what I want to do eventually I want to have like once that once that white one's gone I want to have like a um, a more heavily damaged one and a light damaged one and also I want to try and get facelifts as well occasionally because people do want facelifts well they want all of them but that, that's the plan anyway but we'll see how it goes we go all done all done nice and clean I've touched in the little bits of paint I've touched it in the one in there you can still see it a tiny bit but not much and then I've touched in the one on the bonnet which you can also see a tiny bit uh, yeah I mean there are some bits there's a couple of little dents on this door but you know I've, how far do you go I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna do everything it's just crazy um, yeah there's a few little marks down the side. There's obviously tree branches and stuff gone down the side of it. I imagine, and these are going to be car park dings. So, I mean, I could try and. There's a blimmin' grasshopper. It's been crawling over the car all the time I've been cleaning it. It's made its way around here. It was on the windscreen a little while ago. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's in direct sunlight at the moment, so obviously they stick out like a sore thumb. But this is this colour is almost as bad as black for um, showing up every little mark. But um, yeah, it's a what? What is it? Nine-year-old car? Ten-year-old car? 12 plate in it so yeah nine year old car so you've got to expect the occasional the odd mark haven't you really but it's all clean inside i'll probably go over the windscreen and that but i'll do that afterwards um i need to get some photos taken actually now i might as well do them now good job and then we can get it up for sale later um so that's it so i, I won't do any more on this video until such time as it's sold and then I can give you the rundown. Um, I think I'm going to put it up for 2850. I'm not sure yet. I need to top up what I've spent, which isn't a massive amount. Oh, look, it's a cat. Um, not mine. Um, yeah, it isn't a massive amount, but um, I need to top up what it is uh, and then make sure I make a reasonable profit. Been a quick turnaround, as you know. I mean, I've had it, I don't know, what have I had it? Three or four weeks? But I haven't been, I haven't had to do that much work on it. I put the new wing on it. I've done that bit of painting, I've cleaned the interior, um, it's gone for an MOT, that's about it, isn't it, I think. That's all I've done. It's main, more, cl more cleaning than anything else. Obviously there's no damage underneath whatsoever. Sailed through the MOT. All is good. So yeah, so I shall put this, uh, probably put this uh, up, on, up for sale later today, or this evening, and um, I will let you know what happens, and I will let you know how quick it sells. Um, and we'll come right back following this little bit of video um, and you'll see what we made out of it. 
We will be back. So, as you just saw in time lapse, uh, that was yesterday. Yesterday evening, uh, a young lady came with a friend of hers to uh, have a look over the car. Um, it, it only lasts 20 seconds, that bit of footage, but they were here for quite some time. Um, and she was said she was going to call me, or she was going to text me within an hour um, of uh, leaving to let me know. But then she decided she wanted it there and then, so we negotiated. Um, I, I add it up to 2850 uh, and we add the deal at 2700. She paid me last night by uh, bank transfer and um, I'm going to deliver the car to her tomorrow. She, she only lives a couple of miles away, so I'm going to deliver it to her and then jump on the bus home. How about that for service, eh? So that's it. That will be the end of this, this um, project. So I've got the uh, sun in my eyes here. I can't see much while I'm, while I'm filming, but let me just swap you around to the car. So obviously everything's done on the car now. Um, she was well happy with it. She liked it. Was, there are a few scratches on it. The, the, the fella that was uh, came with her was looking over it. it. They show up more in the when there's um, when the sun's out. The, the scratch on the bonnet has has almost gone. But there is some. I've noticed there is some um, pattern in the bonnet. He noticed it as well. Um, in the sun, you can see it more. Um, I'm going to try. And, I'm going to have another go at polishing this and see if I can get rid of them because they weren't there before. I've obviously done that. So my cutting and polishing skills are not what I thought they were. Um, this obviously the cut. I think I've, I don't know when I, when I was sanding, I don't know if I, I, I did that instead of that. Should have, should have done it straight, I think. And I did that and I've caused swirls in it. So I'm going to have another go and see if I can polish them out. Um, as I'm delivering it to her tomorrow. So I want it to be as good as good as possible. Um, so I got the moth out, <laughs> I'd forgotten to do that and I did that this morning, so I got the moth out of there, uh, so yeah it's all ready to go now, so yeah come to, come tomorrow, um, I'm transferring it over to her tonight online, and uh, come tomorrow I shall be driving it to her house, so as I say that's uh, the end of uh, Project Maisie, it was a very quick project, um, I had a bid on three cars, let me put you back up and round so yeah I had, I had a bid on three cars yesterday, and uh, sorry, not yesterday, today. Let's go in the garage that um, I can talk to you without the sun in my eyes. So, yeah, I had um, three cars yesterday. I keep saying yesterday, three cars today I bid on. I uh, didn't get any of them. We had 2016 pop um, that went for 3,000. No, I've forgotten. I can't even remember what they went for, but far too much money they went for. Um, there, was, there was that, the 2016 pop. There was uh, a black. 2011 pop which was really really in good condition but it went for like 1500 and something when you once you had fees on you're approaching two grand um, which is too much for a 2011 car far too much that's last year's lockdown prices wouldn't be paying that now uh, and the other one was um, a Colt uh, that went for 2300 pounds it was 2015 Colt sorry 2450 it went for I think it was um, a white Colt um, so that had the really nice leather seats in it, really lovely those with the black roof. Uh, but it went for too much money. None of these cars had that much to do to them, um, but too much for me to. I think which one was it? I was thinking of the, I think it was the black pop. I reckon I'd sell that for probably two six. Um, and it, I think it went for one four fifty something like that. So once you add about three four hundred pound fees on. You got a record on about hundred pound delivery. I'd probably, if there's no surprises, it needed. I think the the bumper may have repaired, and it needed a new wing. Worst case scenario, it needed a new bumper as well. If there was anything hidden that it needed, I don't know. What, I can't remember what the MOT was on it, but if there was anything hidden, which obviously there often is, that's it. And it yes, your profit gone. So it wasn't worth it. If if I got it for a grand, or eleven hundred quid, then it would have been worth it. But I don't think it was. Um, at that price so didn't get another car today so we've still got the white one obviously and as you know we're doing that in bits and pieces um, 
I'm going to buy one of those welding kits, the spot welder kits. If you've seen uh, the last video on that, you'll see that um, I drilled holes in that back bit and pulled it out and filled it. Um, some of you have not liked that. Um, that was my only option. Um, people telling me to weld it, weld over the holes. I have got a welder, but that seems a bit OTT to me. Um, so, you know, some of you know better than I do. Um, I do the best job I can with what I've got, the equipment that I've got. I've, I have got a welding machine, um, but I'm going to buy it. I think I'm going to invest in one of those little spot welders where you spot the little the little things on and then you pull on those to um, to pull the dents out. So I've got two two dents in the sill on uh, to pull out. So I'm going to I'm going to get one. Sod it. I'm just going to get one and do it. Um, so yeah. So uh, back to uh, Project Maisie. Um, so yeah. So we got um, sold it for two seven. Uh, and I made £630 on it, which ain't, ain't bad for the actual amount of time that I spent on it. So all we really did was we, we bought paint, we bought a new wing, that's it, and the MOT. That's about it. I know we changed the wheels over from a different car, but you know, I've still got those other wheels, they just need a refurb, so I, I don't really count that um, as spending money, because you know, all right, it will cost me a can of paint to spray them, but I will put that onto whatever car they go on. Um, but that, yeah, that's all it's cost me. That's all it's cost me. Didn't even bother putting new uh, number plates on. And I've also got a spare set. If you remember from the walk around, there's a spare set in the there was a spare set in the boot, so I put those back in the boot. So yeah, that's it. That's the end of Project, project Maisie. Hope you enjoyed this uh, project. I have. It's been uh, it's been it was a bit nerve wracking at the beginning when we didn't know whether that wing was going to match. But um, it's been a good little project, uh, and it just shows you that you can make you can make just as much profit on a more expensive to buy car but less work to do than you can on a cheaper car with more work to do and of course you get it done quicker so yeah it's not always about buying the most damaged car like the one I've got around the corner there which is obviously quite a lot of work on that involved on that so most of which I've done actually but um, some of the other bits are a bit time consuming um, but yeah it just shows you that um, you know, I, I was a bit, a little bit worried because I paid over the odds on this. There were no surprises. There was nothing damaged underneath. Had there been un underneath, and I'd had to spend two or three hundred quid, then that would have halved my profit. But um, I think making six hundred and thirty quid profit on a on a really quick turnaround like this is pretty good, to be fair. But um, yeah, so that's the end of the project. I'm going to have a little go at this now, but you won't be seeing the car anymore. Um, I'm just going to try and improve on those, get rid of those swirly marks on the uh, on the bonnet. So uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the project, and we will, of course, be carrying on with um, the white car, uh, and hopefully, we'll be getting another project very soon. But um, from Project Maisie and myself, take care, stay safe, and we will see you uh, very, very soon. <laughs>